Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Winning strategies on negotiating salary. That's what we're talking about today on Things You Should Know. Stick around. Here at Things You Should Know podcast, our focus varies from commonly asked questions like, what are the top email apps for iPhone users? Or how much does it cost to go to Disney World anyway? To the trending topics of the day, such as, Are taxes going up or down? And who's Elon Musk? We shed light on things you probably have always wondered about, but you never got around to investigating them yourself. This podcast brings you the answers to your most commonly asked questions and makes you smarter just by listening. Information empowers, and the more information you have, the better decision you can make, and ultimately, your quality of life is based on the decisions you make. So thanks for joining the discussion and make sure that you subscribe today and not miss out on any future episodes of Things You Should Know. You may not feel very powerful before you officially sign a job offer to accept a position. After all, you're not even working at the company yet. The fact is, You do have the greatest negotiating power during that short window between being offered a job and formally accepting it. Think about it. The hiring manager has already tipped her hand by letting you know that they want to bring you on board. The team, the company, has invested time and resources into this particular process, the interviewing process, and they've all come to the consensus that you would be the best person for the position, and they're eager to seal the deal and get you in and get you to work. Now comes the hard part. In fact, dealing with salary negotiation makes people so uncomfortable that they end up accepting the first number that being offered without even countering. This is a mistake, according to experts. Since employers generally expect some negotiation in the hiring process, they built that into their initial offer by initially pitching a number that is lower than what they'd ultimately accept. So, how do you go about negotiating a salary that reflects what you were, what you're worth and what you want. We're going to talk today about some winning strategies. We're going to offer you some advice on how to negotiate salary for new positions, for positions that you're going for inside of your company for uh, additional promotions and things of that. We're even going to give you some actual language, uh, some examples of what others have said that have proven to be effective. So, guys, welcome aboard. Welcome into the podcast. You reach things you should know. And as you heard on the way in, we're talking salary negotiations today. I'm your host, Kelly, and you've picked a really good time to listen. Every, you know, every time we do a podcast, I think it's a good time, but we're coming up on a new year. Uh, A lot of folks uh, like to um, upgrade, if you will, uh, jobs and careers uh, starting in the new year. Companies are usually looking to uh, define and maybe even redefine some roles coming into a new year. So now's a good time to start thinking if you want to uh, 
look at different roles, different positions. How do I, once I'm successful obtaining it, how do I get the salary that I am looking for? And that's what we're going to help you with today. That's the value in listening. Now, this is your first time listening. Thank you guys so much for uh, being with us today. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. Thank you so much. I'll ask you both to do the same thing, and that is to like, subscribe, and share. Please continue to share our content with your family, friends, loved ones, and associates. That helps us out greatly. Uh, we really depend upon our you, our listeners, in getting the word out. Getting the word out. If uh, you do enjoy the podcast, and according to a lot of the numbers that we see, we believe that you do, please share the information if you find it helpful for you. Certainly, you know, it would be helpful for others. So, no further ado, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the podcast. Uh, We're in the first week of December. Today's December the 6th. And like I said, the new year will be upon us quicker uh, then we know. And if you are looking to seek out new opportunities in the new year, then take this information with you. And it's our goal to always provide you and empower you uh, to, you know, reach that higher quality of life. So first question, why you should negotiate your salary? Why? So the idea of negotiating a job offer and discussing your pay is usually intimidating in folks Folks feel uncomfortable about doing it. Uh, But here's what you should know. You're not alone. There was a recent study done. uh, This article comes to us from Indeed.com, which, of course, is a huge job board platform. Uh, They've done a study uh, survey, and they say that more than 58 percent of respondents claim to never or rarely ever negotiate their pay. However, Not negotiating your salary and benefits can negatively affect you, of course, over the life of your career. That has happened probably to most of us. I know it's happened to me. For example, if the average U.S. annual salary increases only 3% and you accept a starting salary that is 10% below your expectations, the question of math is how long is it going to take for you to get to where you want to be? It could take over two years just to regain those earnings back. So it is very important to learn how to negotiate salary. It may ease your nerves to know that when it comes to salary negotiation, employers actually expect a negotiation. I don't think it's going to surprise them. As we said on the way in, many times they add in uh, this into their particular pitch. Perhaps, for example, if the job, uh, uh, the the job is uh, really going to pay about seventy five thousand, maybe they will come to you with a lower, a lower number just to see what your response is going to be. Because the less, un, you know, this is a numbers game, and this is a capitalistic society. Those companies, any companies in business to make money, so the less they have to pay you, the more they can use that money for something else. So if they offer you 65 or 68 and you take it and you could have gotten 75, uh, it's going to benefit them. Now, Indeed did an additional survey that found 70 percent of managers expect candidates to negotiate their salary, not only their salary, but also their benefits. So we're going to talk primary salary today, but I think it's important that you know and understand how to negotiate your salary and your benefits. And your benefits. We're living in a day and age where health care coverage is uh, not what it used to be. Not what it used to be. So when should you negotiate your salary? So there's, there's, there's really two ideas here, two thoughts. Number one, if you're switching companies or if you're a new hire, let's say you're a college student, you're going into the workforce, this is your first role. If you are currently... Uh, Uh, a professional and you're going into a different role uh, at a new company, or if you are going for a promotion within your current company, I think you can use the strategies here that we're going to offer the same way. So it's best to negotiate your salary after, after is the key, you receive an offer rather than during the earlier stages of the interview process. And uh, we did a podcast back at 
oh man, this has been January of this year, but it's one of the more popular podcasts that we have on on the platform, and and that is. Uh, we answer some questions on things, you know, the, the 10 most popular questions that you're going to be asked during an interview. And one of the questions uh, came back as to, you know, what type of salary are you expecting? And, and the exact title, in case you want to go back and look for that, uh, in case you want to go back and look for that particular podcast, it was what are the top 10 most commonly asked interview questions? And you guys have downloaded that more than any other podcast. So I know what we're talking about today uh, can benefit you and you're interested in it because you've downloaded that one so much. So when to negotiate your salary? Wait until you're actually being offered. Now, there is a potential, as you'll know, and if you've done this before, that they're going to ask you about it during the interview process. So I'm going to suggest to you that you go back and listen to the top 10 most commonly asked interview questions, couple it along with what we're doing for you today, and use that to empower you as you go out and begin to market yourself. Okay? Uh, Now, it makes sense that you would wait until you get an offer before you begin to really hardline negotiate. Uh, You have the most leverage after you've proven that you're the best candidate. That is true. After you've proven that you're the best candidate for the job, you have the most leverage. Now, you know it and the employer knows it. They want you. If otherwise, they wouldn't have offered you the job. Now, Kelly, sometimes, you know, do people out uh, maneuver themselves? Yes. Yes. Uh, if, for example, in our first, uh, if, if you take our first example and we said 75 was the real number that the employees were willing to go for and they're going to offer you 68 and you insist on 85 or 95, uh, you probably would negotiate yourself right out of that offer and they would go with someone else or repost the position. And part of what you're going to learn today is how not to do that. Part of your negotiation will have been some homework on your part, understanding what the window is. What is the window? Well, there's a window for every particular position at any company. If you are a, let's say you are a sales director for your company and you sell widgets, where it really doesn't matter what you sell, but you sell widgets, you're the sales director. Well, that position's window or range of salary could be from one hundred thousand to one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars plus benefits, which is part of your compensation. Well, that's the window. So if you come in on the lower end, which is the one hundred thousand dollar range, they have room to give you increases while you're in that position and keep you within that window. Uh, If you come in at the top of that range, then there are some negotiations and things that may uh, need to happen if you stay in that position for a certain amount of time. But if you exceed that window in your ask, there are two things that can happen if you don't do your homework. And then we're going to get into this article, which, of course, is going to be posted on our Facebook page. So I'll suggest to you now to join our Facebook page and our Facebook group. So there are two things that could happen. Number one, if you don't do your homework, you don't know about this window, uh, you could market yourself out of the position by asking for too much money or even worse, in my opinion, or equally as worse, I should say, you could accept it below the window. Let's say, for example, you get the job offer, you've not done your homework and you've got a clever HR director and they ask you to accept it at 95.5 as opposed to 100 and you accept it. Well, the real window was 100 to 125. You've just saved them 4,500 bucks plus whatever uh, benefits or anything else that would have would have gone along with that, that you may have received at a lower pace or scale as well. So it's important to do your homework. Let's talk about 13 tips to prepare yourself for the negotiations. Okay. Number one, you want to start off by evaluating what you have to offer. A lot of times you won't know who your, uh, I'm doing air quotes here, who your competition is, Uh, but it shouldn't really matter. It helps sometimes, but it doesn't have to. 
It's important for you to know exactly how much value you can offer to the employer based on your past performance, your skill set, your education. Okay. now this is all going to work for you as it relates to negotiating your salary. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, Number one, a geographic location. Why don't you consider the cost of living where you are currently located. For example, you might require a higher salary in San Francisco, which is bananas expensive, versus somewhere like Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, you're going to be doing the same responsibilities, but where you live matters. So consider that. How many years of experience do you have? If the job is asking for three to five years of experience, You want to make sure, number one, you meet that. But if you exceed it, if you have eight to 10, you exceed it, then you are building leverage. What about years of leadership experience? Let's say the employer prefers or actually requires leadership skill sets and you, number one, meet them or number two, you exceed them. This may be also justification for asking for higher pay. Your educational level, your career level, your skill set, if you have licenses and certifications, all of these things play a role in building your um, building your appearance before the uh, folks in HR and saying, here's my if you were building a case file and you were a prosecutor, you would put all of these in the file. You want to make sure that you really promote your educational level if it is above average. Let's say, for example, you have a master's or a PhD, and you know that most people in that particular role do not. Well, you want to make sure that you use that as part of your negotiation. Your career level. Again, you may expect higher pay if you have been in uh, that industry longer longer than the average uh, person or you have a certain level of experience that you know other candidates may not. So that is leverage as well. What about skill sets? Over your duration, have you added to your uh, academia, your base, your education? If so, you have a certain niche or a certain skill set. Let's say you're a coder. Let's say you're a programmer and you have these certain skill sets and you've mastered them. Perhaps that can add into your file as well to negotiate higher salaries. And of course, if you do have a particular skill set, let's say, for example, a few years ago, I went to um, update my skill set and I obtained a project management certification. So now I'm a project management professional. And in my industry, at my level, a lot of people are not. Well, why did I do it? Am I a project manager every day? In a sense, but not, uh, I didn't have to have it. But the fact that I do have it, it bodes well for me if I was to go outside and to go and market myself to do something else. It can help me to make the argument for higher levels of compensation based on my experience plus an actual certification or license. All right. So those are things that you want to use to begin to build your case. Now, here's more homework for you to do. Number one, research the market. What is the national average for your salary? Now, how do you find out the national average for the salaries? Well, good folks like monster.com and deed.com Most of the good job boards will give you a listing. You can find this on LinkedIn. And I don't think you have to have um, one of those upgraded accounts in order to get this. Uh, LinkedIn, Indeed's salary calculator, or Monster. You can find for that role a range, a national salary range. Okay. now what's the average in your location? Because you want if you live in Charlotte and you're asking for money that they're paying folks in San Francisco, you need to be aware, perhaps, why the salary differences are are there. Okay, so it's primarily geographic. So I'm not saying don't ask for it because the more you can get, the God bless you. But if they tell you that, hey, the cost of living in Charlotte is less than San Francisco. So the quality or the, you know, um, 
the quality of work is going to stay the same. The responsibilities are going to say, stay the same. But here's what we pay this position in Charlotte. Here's what we pay in San Francisco. I think you need to be aware of that. OK, and you make up your mind what you want to do. But I do know that the cost of living in San Francisco is much higher than that in Charlotte. And I wouldn't expect the salary ranges to be the exact same. And then lastly, how much do similar companies pay in your area employees for that particular role that you're going for? So compare and contrast, compare and contrast. You're going to have to do your homework. Number three, why don't you go ahead and prepare your talking points? Anticipate, anticipate questions that they're going to ask. Again, I'm going to refer you back to if you really want to be empowered, I'm going to refer you back to what are the 10 most commonly asked interview questions. Within that, you know, we did talk about salary and negotiation. So if you want to prepare yourself, look at those top 10 questions. Quite honestly, within an interview, reasonable interview, I don't think you're going to have time to be asked more than 10 questions, maybe one or two more. But if you listen to that particular podcast, you're going to be really empowered. All right, number four is schedule a time to discuss. What you want to do is reach out to the recruiter or your hiring manager or whoever you're working with. Uh, you want to talk to them over the phone. You want to not negotiate this over email. It's encouraged to do this either in person or over the phone. OK, you always want to be uh, respectful. You want to be clear. You want to be concise and you want to make sure that you are talking to someone who is a decision maker. You don't want to have the same conversation, you know, a couple of times. You want to make sure that when you speak to someone and they are making you the offer, uh, that they have the power to also negotiate the salary. All right. Uh, so number five is rehearse what you build in your case here, rehearse it with a partner or friend, your mate, just go over the information uh, to make sure it flows and you're comfortable talking about it. A lot of times people are uncomfortable saying good things about themselves. They are uncomfortable, unfortunately, being a champion for themselves. Many people find it to be braggadocious and somewhat, um, off-putting to, to, to do it. Uh, you know, I remember when I was in my 20s and I was going through a couple processes like this internally for a company I was working for, I did. I found, I found it very difficult to say good things about myself um, and to, to justify why I should be paid what I was asking to be, to be paid. So it's quite common. So you want to build up the confidence. You want to probably also do some mirror work. That means... Take your script into the bathroom or whatever room there's a mirror and begin to un unload and talk to yourself. You have to believe this if you expect others uh, to believe it. You have to be comfortable with this information. You have to feel confident. The more confident you are, this is number six, be confident. The more confident you are in delivering these um, gems, these, these things that you're saying about yourself, the more likely it is for the audience, the folks that are interviewing you, to receive them, to receive them. I've interviewed and I've been interviewed. One of the most off-putting things is when you are interviewing someone is that they lack the confidence in themselves. They've come for the position, they're interviewing, obviously, but you can tell the way they're asking the question or answering the question, they're not quite confident in their answers. And so that's telling in and of itself. So not only do you need to prepare your answer for the interview for this particular discussion, but you also need to prepare yourself for how to interview, how to interview. Maybe we do an additional podcast on that. How do I prepare myself to even be at an interview? What do I look like? What do I sound like? What do I smell like? All these sorts of things, because appearance is key. It's very key. 
All right, number seven, uh, lead with gratitude. Once you reach the job offer phase, of course, you want to uh, uh, let the company know that you're grateful and that you, you realize they've invested their time and energy and possibly money, most companies do, in getting to this level. And they're offering you the job. So you want to be grateful. Thank you for seeing uh, the value that I bring to the table. And I appreciate this offer. The employer has also invested a lot of time in this process. And it's critical and crucial for them that they complete this because they want to get you in and get you working. Because the sooner you're in, the sooner you can start adding some value for them. So be sure uh, to share any specific reasons why uh, you're excited about the job, such as the culture, the product, the position itself. And I, you know, I can't wait. I've got these wonderful ideas I want to bring to the table. You want to kind of lead with that sort of attitude because it, it, uh, it disarms, number one, it disarms. And you're able to, I'm thinking of if I'm the offerer, if I'm the company and I'm offering you a position and someone is super excited about their role coming into my company, that makes me feel good. That makes me feel like I've completed my task uh, successfully. Now we get through this last part, which is negotiating your salary, and then we're off and running. All right. So number eight, you want to ask for the top level of your range. What is the top of your range? A fundamental rule of salary negotiation is to give the employer a slightly higher number than your goal. They're going to give you a lower number. (laughs) You're going to give them a higher number. And what's going to happen is more than likely you're going to meet somewhere in the middle. Okay, so be aware of that when they make you the offer and they do throw out a number, just know that's not the perfect number you know, necessarily. That is where they like for you to be if you say yes. Now, there's somewhere that they're able to negotiate, no different than if you're buying a car and going through that sort of thing. Uh, there's a negotiation that they anticipate. So as for the top range of that salary, if you don't already know, now you've done your homework and you know some ranges, you may not know specific to that company what their window or range is, but you do have an idea right? You do have an idea. So you know if it sounds right, if it doesn't. So number nine, you want to share job related expenses that you may be incurring. These are part of the benefits that you want to negotiate. If you are a sales director, then you're expected to be out making sales calls. So you want to ensure that you have the benefit of being paid for your mileage. You want to make sure you have the benefits, for example, of upgrades to your vehicle, or maybe you even want a company vehicle based on the position of, you know, itself. You want to make sure that your cell phone bill, uh, could potentially could be paid for or some of the costs could associated with that. You want to make sure that you have a expense account. So that when you're taking clients potentially to lunch or dinner, that you are not coming out of pocket for these sorts of things. All of that needs to be discussed before you receive or before you accept the offer. Okay. If you accept the sales offer and let's say uh, the company expects, but didn't clarify that you cover your own gas, that is going to eat into your salary. You want to make sure that all this work that I'm doing for the company is going to be paid for by the company. So that means gas, that means dinners, that means lunches, it means car repairs. You've got to make sure that you are prepared and you're covering yourself. All right, number 10. Uh, Number 10 is prepare for tough questions. Tough questions. Recruiters and hiring managers negotiate often, so they're used to this. They have an advantage over you because maybe you don't do this as much as they do. So sometimes uh, some intimidating questions may come. You know, it helps to figure out what your motivations are. It's important not to get rattled. It's important to anticipate these questions and to remain honest. Now, uh, some examples are. Are you are are we your top choice? So, for example, they could say, I know that you've interviewed with other companies or are you looking at other companies? Are we your top choice? How do you answer that question? What about if they say we come up in salary? Will you accept the position immediately? Will you accept the position immediately? You said, hey, if you come back at 95 or, or I'm sorry, 105, I'm your guy, but I need at least 105. If we do that, will you accept immediately? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. 
Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design. Your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. What about, do you have any other offers? Any other companies competing for your talent, for your skill set, for you, for you as their, uh, as, as their guy or girl? Uh, hiring manager, recruiter may ask that. You know, when you go to list your house for, <laughs> to sell or to buy or whatever, realtors going to want to know immediately, are you working with someone else? Why? Because don't waste my time. And if I am competing with someone else, I need to know why and to what degree. Give me as much information as possible. Again, I'm going to refer you back to what are the top 10 most commonly asked interview questions. That podcast is going to help you answer those questions that I just gave you. Number 11, you want to be flexible with your time and with this process. If the employer is unable to provide the salary amount you want, they may be able to offer other forms of compensation. Example, let's say you want to negotiate salary. They can't do it, but you may be able to negotiate stock options, extra vacation days, higher signing bonus, additional work from home benefits, whatever that you think is going to be appropriate or equal to that pay makeup deficit distance, then you determine what that is. And then ultimately you'll have to determine if that is worth it. So sometimes being flexible is not worth it. If you're an executive and you want an additional 25,000 or 50,000 on your salary and the company can't do it, but they're offering you an additional, I don't know, uh, package as it relates to stock options, then you've got some additional homework to do. How's the stock? Is this worth it monetarily? And then you make the decision. Uh, Number 12, ask questions. Ask questions. Questions to me when I'm interviewing people says a lot. Number one, it says they're interested, they're invested, uh, they've done some work. When you know the mission and the vision of the company you're interviewing for, which are the basics, you don't want to walk into a company X and they ask you, hey, you're interviewing for the director of marketing. Uh, what's our mission? What's our vision? You don't want to not know that. Number one is going to expose the fact that you're not prepared. But as the director of marketing, you're going to be the one blowing the horn for this company. You're going to need to know that more than anyone else. So don't come to the interview and not know that. The basics are, and to put you ahead of folks, is to know, you know, who, what, when, and why for who you're interviewing for. You should know the mission and you should know the vision of the company. You should obviously know what a product or service you're selling. You should know as much or more about this particular position than the folks interviewing you. That's the only way you're going to make it. I'm going to use this term a fair fight. All right. So don't be afraid to walk away. Sometimes it doesn't add up. Sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes, you know, you're going to be much better 
than what they can offer. And because you're much better than what this employer can offer, I'll tell you that there's another company that will be willing to pay you because you are much better. Don't lower your standard of um, pay because the company can only offer you so much. This is not the only company. Now, having said that, I do know that um, there are times where, you know, listen, Kelly, I've got to get a job. I've got to get a paycheck going. I get that. And my answer there would be do what you need to do in, you know, in order to do more, in order to do better later. So if you do need to accept uh, a position in order to just get some revenue going, okay, fine. But I would expect that you would continue your search for um, that position that's going to put you from a salary standpoint where you want to be. Don't just go there and get stuck. Many people do. Many people do. It is not the easiest thing. To, to start a company, look for a different job when you already have some sort of job going on because that's taking up the primary parts of your day. So you've got to make that decision for yourself. Okay, so I promised you that we were going to give you some language in terms of specifics about uh, what you can actually say when you're negotiating a job. So we here for the new newcomers, We usually uh, do our research and we pull at least three articles about the topic that we're talking about. So I do have three articles. Uh, The first that you heard came from Indeed. I have an article that is from Harvard.edu that talks about negotiating salary, three uh, winning strategies. I bounce that up against the Indeed, and there are very similar strategies. And I'm going to post these on our Facebook page so that you, the listener, can go and read uh, for yourself to make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Now, this article uh, that I'm about to kind of go over that's going to give you some language comes from uh, usnews.com, and it's entitled What to Say, What to Actually Say When Negotiating a Job Offer, Salary in a Job Offer. They lead off with some tips, okay, very similar to the tips I just gave you. Number one, the first step is to arm yourself with market data. What are the average salaries for the position you're going for? What are the average salaries? Now, keep in mind geographic location, et cetera. Number two, uh, factor in your own level of experience and unique attributes to bring to the table. We talked about that before. Build your case, your skill set, your academia, your uh, uh, past performance, Uh, special licenses or certifications, if you speak additional languages, anything that will add to your file to make your file thicker than someone else's. Think of yourself as the interviewer and what would you like to hear from the perfect candidate and go in that direction. And then finally, build a small cushion of cash that goes slightly above the number that you want. In other words, if you want to be at 95 Don't offer 95, offer 105. Why? Because they could come back and say, hey, we can't do 105, but we could do 98. That puts you not only where you want it to be, but it gave you a $3,000 cushion negotiation. So we talked about those already. But anyway, here's some examples of exactly what you want to say when you negotiate salary. First example is this. Part of your informal verbal job offer, the employee has likely shared shared or suggested starting, uh, you know, a starting salary with you. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be going in. Many times when we're looking for positions, the first thing we look for is the salary. Well, maybe the first thing we look for is the position title so we know this is what we do. And then secondly, well, what are they paying? After we validated those two things, then we can get into the nuts and bolts of it, the details. Okay, what are they asking for? Okay, so you more than likely have an idea of what they're willing to pay. But otherwise, you wouldn't go into this job interview. So let's say the number is 53, 53,000, which you happen to know is a little low for the industry based on your research. Now, don't think of this as the final word. We've talked about that already. You know that it is a negotiation and that these folks expect to be negotiated. But what do I say, Kelly? What do I say to get me to the number where I want to be? 
let's let's this is actual language. I'm going to read it word for word out of the article. Quote, I'm very excited about the position. Remember, we said to enter with some gratitude. It's going to disarm the HR uh, person, the recruiter, whoever uh, is hiring. It's going to disarm them. I'm very excited about this position, and I know that I'd be the right fit for your team. I'm also excited about your offer and knowing that I'll bring a lot of value to the table based on my experience that we've discussed during this interview. I'm wondering if we can explore a slightly higher starting salary of $60,000. Remember, the offer was fifty three. dollars my, mar- my, my market research showed that as the industry average for this area, and, uh, that that was the industry average for this area, and I'm confident that you'll be very happy with how much I can contribute to this team and to this department, ultimately to the company, Okay. So that's a way to begin uh, to talk about the negotiation, the salary. Uh, We talked about disarming the recruiters, the HR uh, personnel, the folks that are interviewing you. And it also shows here that you've done the research. You're empowered. You've come with information. And I think they're going to value that because they feel like, okay, this person uh, uh, is invested already. This person does their homework. This is a smart individual. This is a clever individual. Because I'm going to tell you, everybody doesn't do that. All right. So let's see. You'll likely feel nervous in delivering this message, but stay poised and upbeat. Again, this is part of your preparation. You're going to do some mirror work. You're going to talk to your partner, your spouse, your friend. You're going to go over this information and talk to them about it and have them sort of correspond with you. So this isn't the first time. This is important. You want to make sure this isn't the first time that you said this, nor is it the first time that you've heard yourself say this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's a podcast we thought you'd like. Hi, it's Tahimia. It's Cam. Rachel. And Amani, your hostesses at The Art of Making It Work, the podcast that knows life doesn't need any help being hard, but sometimes we need a little help making it easier. On our show, we discuss an array of topics ranging from travel to friendships and even finances with a whole lot of girl chat in between. We're here to give you research-based life hacks and initiate discussions to help you and one another navigate this thing called life. So tune in to The Art of Making It Work every Monday for new episodes wherever you stream your podcast content. We mentor, I'm part of a social group, and we mentor young men. And a large part of what we do is teach public speaking. One of the things I always tell the kids, these young men, is that you have to see yourself doing this in order for you to be successful. If this is the first time that you've heard yourself say this, when you're telling me or a crowd, you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to go through this verbally and you have to go through it mentally. You have to see yourself being successful. And this doesn't just work for public speaking. This is life. This is creation. I don't want to get too far off, but this is how all creation happens. You envision the success for yourself multiple times in your head and you can bring something from a spiritual level into a physical level. Here, you want to hear yourself say it because you want to work out the language to make sure it's non-threatening, it's accurate, etc. All right. So what do I say? Number one, I'm glad. I'm glad you're interested in the position and the team is excited about the possibility of working with you as well. However, the position is budgeted only at 53. This is what they could come back and say. Okay, they could come back and say it's it's only budgeted 53. So you're into the meat of the negotiation. Most candidates would fold and say, okay, well, if they said this is it, then this must be it. Don't be one of those folks. This is the first negotiation tactic of that particular recruiter or HR person. Continue with your pursuit of the salary that you know you're worth. Here's something that you could say, quote, I definitely understand budgeting issues. And I want to be as flexible as possible to work with your team. I'm still very excited about joining your group. And I would like to explore whether 60000 is possible, given my specific experience 
and my specific skill set. Okay, in other words, you want to push back, but not push him on the floor. Listen, I've done the research here too. This is basically what you're saying. And I'm just as excited about working with the team as you guys are having me. But the truth of the matter is, I want to see, see if you can explore. If you're in a large company, even in a small company, no different if you're negotiating a price of a car. This is when the sales rep walks off and says he's got to go talk to his manager. Listen, I can only sell this car at twenty thousand. You say, listen, guy, the man down the street had it for seventeen five. I came to you first. I want to buy it from you. If you can give it to me for seventeen five, great. If not, I'm going to the guy down the street. Don't just say, hey, all I can do is you know. If he tells you it's only twenty, it's twenty. No, if you want the car at the price you want it, the negotiations continue. Now, it may be uncomfortable waiting to see what happens next because it could be a situation where you're left in a room and they go off and have a discussion, or it could be a situation where they tell you, well, we will contact you at a later date. I've been in that boat where you're waiting and waiting and waiting, and you think, oh, my God, did I just ruin this because I had this this, uh, negotiation? This is where you need to really dig into your confidence bag of tricks and know that you went by your your schematics, your rules, uh, the outline, everything you did was right. And it was in order because, again, you don't want to accept a position that is lower than the salary that you're willing to accept, especially if it's lower on a national scale. Because we talked about how long it would take you to get back up to speed in terms of your overall career. Because you take a your first position under scale. Your second, third, and fourth are going to automatically be on the scale because you've not worked your way up, especially if you're in the same company. So um, if the manager puts a final nail in the coffin and says, I'm sorry, but this is our final offer, then at least you know that you did try. And it's likely that you may hear something more along the lines of this. Okay, I'm not sure whether this is going to work with our budget, but Let me look into it. That's where you want him to go. Let me look into it. We'll get back to you with an answer by whatever date. Maybe they, hopefully they say tomorrow. So now you just have to stay calm. You have to stay confident. You want to thank them, appreciate them for their time, for their energy, and the fact that they are willing to do this. Okay. Thank you for doing that. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. I know this is going to work out. I'm looking forward to getting positive feedback from you, whatever your salutation is before you leave, but thank them. Now, um, perhaps they come back and say, Hey, I wasn't able to get the 60 approved, but I did get this approved 56, given how much you want to be on our team. And at this point, you simply have to determine the difference $4,000 is going to make and you accept in the position or not. Hopefully they come back and say, yeah, I can get to 60, uh, you know, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So you still have to have a decision to make. Now, is it appropriate for you to say, hey, um, let me think about it. Can you give me 24 hours before I accept? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, if they say, hey, I've got to have an answer today, they say, listen, I appreciate uh, you doing this for me. Uh, this isn't where I want it to be. So if you could give me 24 hours to discuss this with my partner, my wife, or just think about it, I will give you a call back tomorrow and I can give you a definite answer. Okay. So I hope that is helpful. I hope that is helpful. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's worth it. It's it's better for you to go through the few minutes or hours of a little bit of uncomfortability versus years of knowing that your salary may be deficient or defunct on some level because of where you came into the company uh, uh, salary-wise. And that has happened to me as a very young person. I was very unaware of how this stuff happened. And I tell you, I was I was doing the work of it seemed like 100 people some days and not getting paid very much. And unfortunately, I had to learn it uh, through trial and error. Well, you don't necessarily have to do that. Here are some really good proven ways, industry standard ways, industry leaders sharing with you tips and tricks on how to get this done and how to make it uh, a little more comfortable for you. But going through this and listening to it, here's what I would tell you. The most important thing is to me to do your homework, to make sure that you've done the research on your role, that position, whatever the window in terms of salary is, and to make sure that you have seen yourself being successful, 
that you've talked this out with a family member, a friend, a spouse, a partner. You've gone through this negotiation before you get into the room. If you do not do that, you're going to make it harder for yourself. Practice makes perfect. In this case, hearing yourself negotiate a salary, even if it's just out loud in the mirror, is going to help you to be more confident when you get in the room with the folks that really need to hear it. Guys, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. I hope you listened all the way to the end and I will reiterate to go back and listen to our podcast entitled uh, The 10 Most Commonly Asked Interview Questions. You couple it with what we did today and I think you're going to be quite empowered walking into your next interview and negotiating for the salary that you desire. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. Our podcast uh, means a lot to us. And listen, have a great day. Have a great week, great month. This is December. Looking forward to Christmas. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. And we'll be back in two days with more great information here at Things You Should Know. Thanks, guys. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.